Here I am at Grey Hope Bay. Well, I'm in Aberdeen Harbour, really. Grey Hope Bay is around the corner, and um, it's just uh, shooting towards the bright water and the sort of twilight light up there. I don't know if you can see the ferries just coming in over there, probably from Shetland or Orkney. And um, so I'm just shooting up. You can see that colour behind me in the sky. So trying to capture that and the wispy clouds and a bit of this in the bottom is really tricky. I'm shooting with the my wide angle lens at the moment it's a 16 to 35 and what i always find with the wide angle lens is that the stuff that's far away just gets so small and diminished uh, and i'm not right on top of the shore here i'm up on top of another kind of big water so it's not really doing the job of sucking in the in the foreground as much as it as, it, as you would kind of think it would do i want to keep working just now while the lights like this i've just got the six stop filter on the camera and i've got a 30 second shot going there i don't know if you'll be able to see that but it's shaping up but there's the makings of something here so i need to get back to work okay here's the view through the camera at the moment i'm struggling with this a little bit um i changed to the 24 to 70 to give me you know the lighthouse to be not so far away um and i'm framing up about here on my previous shot it's, it's like do you go this way or do you go this way i like having these rocks coming in at the bottom and i, I you know, you kind of want to think, well, the sky's okay, but not much cloud, not so much cloud up there. So, and you obviously kind of want to avoid the 50-50 split as well. So, I suppose the question is, do you go there or do you go there? I'm okay with that, I think. I like where those little wispy clouds are positioned at the top. I like the rocks coming in at the bottom. Kind of tempting to change the position this way, but I think that leaves it a bit off balance, you know, that big empty space on the left, I think that needs to be cut into by that big water and the lighthouse and you can't really go much further that way because the rocks at the bottom now are coming out of the middle of the frame, I think they want to come out of the bottom corner, so that these rocks down at the bottom are kind of balancing off the lighthouse over there. Well, I've just put the uh, two-stop grad in there for the sky. The sky's working a bit better now. It was a bit kind of empty earlier on, but I don't know if you can see that. It's a lot nicer now, and we're getting some sunrisey kind of colour up there. So I've got a composition that I'm kind of working on, something about something a bit like that, really. The thing is, um, this develops very quickly when the sun, the, the sky starts to lighten up, and you get here. An hour or so before sunrise, the sky's got some light and some colour in it, but it can change very, very quickly. In a one minute exposure with f11, ISO 200, um, I don't want to go really long on the exposure. I don't want to be standing for four minutes or eight minutes for an exposure, so one or two minutes is, is about as long as I usually want to go. Um, so I'm happy to creep the ISO up a little bit and deal with the consequences of that later. Uh, those consequences being a bit of a noisier, grainier picture and kind of deal with that in light later on. But uh, I'm going to just keep working on this spot just now, then I'm going to head down over that way behind me to the other side of that breakwater once the sun's up in the sky and see what I can get from that side. Look at these beautiful birds up there. It's a great spot. And um, so I'll see if I can find a spot down here. Uh, with a shot leading into there and you can see the sun has come up now and you can just get that beautiful light on the lighthouse. Love it. I could have stayed there a bit longer but I've been talking about getting to the other side of this breakwater all morning, so let me get round there. I've just found my own lens cap, which I must have dropped earlier. There it is. Okay, so I've got myself in a in a an okay spot here. I'm about to try a uh, long exposure with the 10 stop filter. Quickly to take you through it, what you want to do with the long exposure with the 10 stop filter, 
I've got on the top there, if you can see that one, that's my tent stopper. First of all, get your composition right, get your focus right before you put the tent stop filter on. Get a test shot without a filter on it. That will give you a base exposure from which to calculate your long exposure. Once you've calculated that, um, get the filters in place, focus before you put the filter in, put the focus onto manual focus so that doesn't move. Lock everything up on the tripod, on the camera nice and well. Mirror up mode, cover the viewfinder, that's really important. And then you're going to dial in your exposure, it might be using bulb mode or time mode um, or a self timer if you've got one, whichever way you're going to do it. And then you're ready to shoot. So here's me ready to shoot for two minutes. I'm going to just put my shutter speed to time and let me mirror up mode. I'm going to first click, lifts the mirror and this click starts the exposure. Now I'm going to ask my phone to give me a two minute timer and I'll let you know how this comes out. This is how that long exposures come out at two minutes. Tricky one because at two minutes um, those clouds just aren't showing much movement at all and that's pretty unusual but some days like this the clouds are just not moving very much so there you go so I might I'm always a bit reluctant to go beyond two minutes because it's a long time to send it out but let me for the sake of the video do a four minute shot and then we'll compare have a look for this Okay, so I was just heading back to the car and now back on the other side of the breakwater inside the harbour and the scene's developed a bit um, from when I was here last so this foreground has really come into play with the tide coming up a little bit so that gives us a totally different option on this side and much more life to the foreground of this picture so I'm going to crack on and get some pictures so I quickly managed to get a couple of shots with some of those rocks there and then in about two minutes the tide had come right up and they were no longer um, really available. It's a little bit too deep for me to sand it. So I found this next little spot here with just a little rock that's isolated um, at the bottom of the frame with these gentle waves washing in and out. So this is a real bonus actually. I've managed to work a, about a two second exposure with uh, oh, there's some really big waves coming in because that boat's just gone by. I've managed to work a two second exposure. Look at that, beautiful. I managed to work about a two second exposure using the uh, six stop ND filter and uh, so my settings for that were about f11 ISO 100 two seconds that's the six stopper with the two stopper on the sky that's the two stop ND grad that's a 0 0.6 grad now I can get back into that rock and get some more pictures this is what I'm looking at and I've got that rock at the bottom as you can see and I've just tried to position it to kind of balance off the position of the uh, lighthouse there and uh, I'm just timing it some different timings with the waves coming up with the waves washing around the rock or the waves cooling down and you get a different look every time so I don't know if there's any technique to this other than try and see what happens and um, I mean what I do know is when, when you're doing it you'll get into the rhythm and you'll find the ones that you like best but uh, if you're in doubt just try a few there's nothing wrong with that that was fun I was I was heading back to the car then and uh, I was thinking about coffee and breakfast and I just saw that scene behind me. I was so tempted to just not go and look at it and I thought let me just be a professional and go down there and at least have a look. You never know if you see something and you've packed your bag and you've folded up your tripod and you're on the way back to the car, you will regret it if you don't go. I've done, I've done it myself, driven away from locations and the sun is just lit up you know uh, just as you drive off and I've done that so many times and I don't like to do that so <laughs> I'd rather get this shot and just take a few more minutes but I'd really enjoyed working with that little rock at the bottom if you can get that one or two seconds shutter speed on the water you can get so many different effects and it's just a matter of keep shooting and then you'll find the one that you like so um, but yeah never give up on landscape photography you just never know what's going to happen and it makes it really exciting and rewarding so rewarding to, for me today um, and so as I said familiar location so you kind of think you know what you're going to get but I just had a really lovely surprise at the end there so hope you got something out of this video don't forget to check my website subscribe to my channel <sighs> enjoy your photography I'll see you out there